Hello and welcome to the New Earth Ascending Connection or Consciousness. Sorry, <laughs> uh, I am goofing it up already. Um, so today we're on, and I have my co-host Bonnie Bird, and we also have um, other co-hosts. They're just not on today. We have Jesse May and um, and David Starr as well. But today we just have myself and Bonnie on, and we thought before we bring our guest in today that we would tell you a little bit about what the new earth ascending consciousness is. And cause a lot of people don't know what it is. So we just wanted to kind of let you know what we're doing. So this is a Facebook group and it was created with the intention to help raise the vibration of all humans on the planet. It's highly, it's a highly interactive group that is not really like most Facebook groups out there. The goal or the dream behind this group is to create a social media platform for those people looking to really make a difference in our society. The group is owned by no one person and with the help of our unity hosts, which are admins, who help to facilitate the group by organizing and running day-to-day -day aspects of the group, they do own this group. We, the unity hosts, have been guided the whole time by spirit and all of what we create in this group is heart-based and given freely from our hearts to yours without expectation of material gain. We have been guided to make this group more interactive by implementing what we call unity circles. Unity circles are online Zoom rooms that we create with the help of members. And so they're very diverse. And um, inside these unity circles, they're just kind of like a workshop. And there's all kinds of topics and everything that we do is to help people get um, spiritual tools to help them with their ascension. And so basically we're looking for, we have lots of different people, all the members, anybody that's interested in maybe hosting a unity circle, you just let us know and, um, and we'll get you on. And so today, Miss, uh, we have um, a lady that is going to be doing the unity circle and uh, hers is going to be all about house clearing and um, she's going to tell a little bit about like some real life ghost stories in honor of Halloween and her unity circle is going to be on Thursday, October 29th and um, details of her um, group up at the top in the announcements. Every week on a Sunday, we'll um, post what unity circles are going to be happening every week so that everybody can know where they are and everything like that. You can go and you can click and all the Zoom links and everything will be there for you. So before I bring her on, Bonnie, would you like to say hi? Hi, everybody. Um, and I also want to say another thing to, to what's unique about our group. Mm -hmm. um, is that it's it's networking it's so we, we help you guys show what your gifts are and show it to the world so that they can so that you can um, also help you out with your personal pages so and 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 we also do allow you to use a donate button if if you choose but um, we do want everybody to know it's from our heart and mm -hmm. we just want everybody to feel welcome and show their gifts and uh, share them with others. Yeah, because when we were doing this, um, we kind of were given instructions by our, our spirit guides. And our guides told us that one thing that was highly important is that when we do this, that we do this um, from our hearts without any expectation. And, um, but then they said that if you wanted to put up a donation button, you could. And there were, and it was, I think it's just like the way of the new manifesting. They were trying to teach us how um, we're going to be manifesting in the future because this is like a prototype for the way that the earth will be like when we fully get into the, the 5D energy. And so we were kind of shown that if we can do this in a Facebook group on social media, then, and we can accomplish this then we can do this in real life as well. So that's what they were kind of showing us when we 
form this. So we thought it would be nice before we brought our guests on to just kind of tell you what this group is all about because it's not like a, a normal Facebook group that's out there. And we just wanted people to know that. So Bonnie, would you like to introduce our guest? Um, this is a beautiful um, energy uh, light working lady. <laughs> she's also a medical intuitive uh, shamanic and she's just a beautiful soul. She's, um, if you ever have one of her, her, if you ever go to see her, you're gonna leave feeling lighter and happy. And also she does house clearings and all kinds of beautiful things. And she's just the most beautiful girl I know, woman. <laughs> I think of her as a girl because she's, she came up through one of my classes and I just thought, think the world of her. So without further ado, this is Kathleen Sherman. Hey everybody, Hi. thank you so much. You made me cry a little bit, Bonnie. Thank I you so you. much. Oh, I love you. <laughs> so much fun. I'm so excited to be a part of your new earth unity circles and um, so excited to share some of my experiences in house clearings and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, like um, Bonnie was saying, um, I do medical intuitive stuff um, in more kind of a combo of shamanic techniques and um, medical intuitive and helping people basically like release anything that's not working for them anymore, especially the really deep stuff. And so, um, I can see past lives and things for people that kind of help move them into a space to help them clear those things. And, and after they clear them, then become lighter. It's like taking the trash out and you just, you know, dump it um, and transmute it, I should say. And then after you transmute it, then you can, then the real work begins. Then you can start doing the really fun stuff and raising that vibration and feeling amazing, clearing things from your body. And um, did you guys want me to talk about the, this, the unity circle I'm going to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us okay. all about your unity circle. Yeah. Okay. So um, I know I had to, I had to talk with my guides this morning. I'm like, what do you want me to do? And they were like, tell some of your stories. It's going to be Halloween time. Um, we all know the veils are really open, especially last year. Um, last year, there was some crazy stuff that happened in October and um, <laughs> it was like, I had to like put, put all my gear on, like I was like, all my spirit animals here, please. Now all my angels, come on. So I work with angels and spirit animals um, and uh, my spirit guides, my higher self, um, ascended masters, and they all come in, Yeshua, big time, Mother Mary. So kind of combine all of those things. I don't just, just do one thing. It's kind of a combination of all kinds of different stuff. And so I bring them in to help uh, help me to clear things on the earth also, not just in, in people. And so I've had a lot of experiences in the past, what, at least four or five years, um, clearing houses and properties. And the cool thing is, is it's not always the same thing. It's sometimes it's more Native American based where I have to, and, and I have to be really careful that I'm being very, um, what's a good word? I have to be very um, diligent in making sure that I'm not offending anybody or any, anything because um, spirit, spirit, you know, people in spirit are people. So um, you have to ask permission. You have to work with them. So it's kind of being a medium in the middle and helping, especially if something's gone really wrong in that area, coming in and seeing who's there, what's, what is there in the first place and seeing how, how to help heal the earth and it's a combo of all kinds of different things so in this class um or i should say the unity circle um i wanted to just kind of tell some of the stories about things that i've encountered and especially because it just runs a total gamut of different things and of course i'm still standing and i'm doing really well so <laughs> um if you believe you're divine and believe in the divine and they work with you um you're pretty safe. So I'd like to teach people how to do that also and how to maybe clear their houses. And if they're having some funky stuff in their house, maybe not go to the fear base like we all tended to do. Like I used to watch, you know, for years, I thought it was so cool. I didn't, you know, I wasn't really, I didn't realize back then years ago that I had gifts and abilities like this. And so I had to kind of overcome my own 
demons, so to speak, uh, literally and so to speak, um, to be able to do what I do. And those taught me a lot of lessons. And when I learned those lessons, then um, it was like, okay, now that you've done that and you've healed yourself, because I was physically ill too, now it's time to go help others. So, okay, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, awesome. and then I'll tell some stories about what I did, what what happened. Um, kind of give people a little bit of a base on, you know, like oh, that's what I was talking about those scary movies, scary shows and stuff like that, where they're going in and um, kind of upsetting the apple cart most sometimes actually, really. Um, and I just now I see it as as not scary like I used to. Now I see the other side of it where. Um, I don't like how they antagonize the spirits there. It doesn't help. It just it just makes them more angry. It doesn't help them go to the light, so to speak, or any of those things that you can help bring balance in. So that's what I do is I come and help the people to, and I teach people when I do a house clearing also. I teach them right along with me what to do and how how to conduct their themselves with <laughs> with those energies because sometimes you can you can kind of make things worse if you don't if you aren't respectful i'll just put yeah. it that way so sure. it's just about being respectful so what brought you to this kind of work i mean what what did you what kind of things you know did you go through that brought you to doing house clearings and um hi david before you go farther Ron. Um, so we have another friend that he yeah. was one of my Unity hosts as well, and he couldn't find the link, and so he was having a little bit of difficulty. We got him the link, and he's here now. So he's also hey one of our This is David. Hey, hey David. Hey David. Okay. Good to see you. So what I was asking Kathleen was, you know, what what brought you to the work that you're doing now? That you know. What 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 led to the other thing that brought you right where you're at right now? So um, so yeah, it, when I was younger, I was completely freaked out um, about anything dark and scary, really. <laughs> so, which is funny. Now I'm the opposite, and I'm going up against the darkest stuff on earth. But um, when I was a kid, I had a shadow figure that would chase me in my sleep, and I I just thought it was nightmares and stuff like that. But really, it was a shadow figure. And it was something that had been following me for through from a past lifetime, actually. And so um, once I learned that I had more power than anything of the dark, um, that I had more power and I could call on my angels and guides, I had no idea about any of that stuff. Um, and I learned to stand in my own um, power. Along with that, I also had a place that I worked that had some really nasty energy. And I was, I was, I had to be there. I didn't have an option because I worked in this, this place. And um, it was very uncomfortable, but all of a sudden I was out um, outside and I was starting to see, um, I actually starting to see like a whole bunch of Native Americans being killed and all this stuff. And I was like, <sighs> okay, I've gone crazy now, you know? And I'm like, well, what is going on? And then, um, then I had a, a chief come up to me and talk to me and explain to me what had happened to them in this place and it it's why the energy was so bad and it was you know a massacre really and and it was really sad it was really hard to watch and go through um and i didn't understand at that time so i was kind of thrown into it honestly all of a sudden i just started seeing things from the past that, that were on this on this land and um and i just remember looking at the chief and going uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do for you. <laughs> I think he was just kind of trying to show me, you know, and I'm like, I'm so sorry about this, you know, and, and I just said, I, I don't know how to help you. But in the, you know, fast forwarding forward, I've learned how to do a lot of energy work and stuff like that since then. This was quite a few years ago. And um, to help bring in peace and balance into, into a place that um, has had a lot of um, harsh things happen there. And so another thing is um, just, I noticed when I started to open up, that was when I started to do this. I could just walk, walk onto a piece of property or in a place and I could see it was kind of cool. It's like the, um, the fast forward motion um, 
pictures or videos that they take. It's literally like they would take me through all the different time frames of what the land looked like in different times. And it was just kind of cool. So some of the things that we had, I had no idea I could do that. And it just came to me when I, when I started opening up. So, um, so when you go up against something that uh, you know that it's really nasty, yeah. you can feel that it's really powerful. What yeah. is it within your heart that makes you feel safe? Um, knowing that I have so, so many, I have angels that come right with me. They walk right into the room with me. The ascended masters, I have angels that surround me and I just know that they've got my back. They've got my back. And then I have a whole bunch of spirit animals that are the same thing. And I have spiritual warriors that come with me that I've kind of even picked up along the way. Like I went to Hawaii and did some energy clearing when I went to Hawaii two years ago. And, um, he and one of the one of the native one of the native chiefs from there actually is he comes and helps me once in a while so whoever i need at that time pops up and shows up and just i just know that they're going to be right there with me helping me to clear the space because that's what i'm supposed to do and you know sometimes when you're um when you're doing this kind of work don't you find out figure out it while when you start talking to the spirit that you end up with two clients, you end up, you know, helping that client, helping the spirit heal and find the light and, you know, go with Yashua or whoever else yep. you're working yeah. with that day. So, you yeah. know, they're just, yeah. you know, a lot of them, if they're earthbound, they're just people with problems, just like when they had a body, you know? Yeah. yeah so they're not necessarily like, um, they're not necessarily like evil beings no. that are like the horrible thing. They're just, they're just people like you and me that when they, when they passed over, they didn't go all the way to the light, I'd say. And they just decided that they were going to stick around and that's what happens. There's always some sort of yeah. trauma or some reason why they feel like they're not good enough and they're afraid to go to the light. So it's like, yeah you know coaching them to the light so you end up with two clients while you're in the middle of that so or yeah. even more a lot of times i do a lot of big mass healings like that and so a lot of times when it's something that's especially if it's a large piece of property i'll go in and kind of assess like who is this what it what is it and how many how many are trapped here like there could be lots trapped you know i just did one recently now i was part of a group effort on that one it wasn't just me and there were hundreds of souls and a lot of times there are hundreds thousands of souls that were were helping to release to the light um carefully and um they've been trapped there for eons or you know thousands of years hundreds of years dozens of years whatever do you find that um, having the people who either own the property or live in the house help you do it, help you do the clearing, that it works so much better because, you know, they have more say over the property because they own it? Yeah. So either they own it or rent it or live in the space. And um, so that gives them the, oh, we lost. Yeah. So it does help if they, if they have, if we have either permission or it's the person that lives there or dwells there. And especially on a couple of them, um, maybe somebody, something that the person that's, that's living, you know, that's living in the proper on the property or in the house is doing is bothering that being. And so um, depends on what it is. There's all different kinds of things that can be in the space. There can be shadow, shadow figures. It can be somebody who's lived on the earth and it could be demonic things that are scary and crappy. Those, those are the things that used to just really petrify me. And it took me a while to be able to stand on my own two feet and go, okay, I'm standing up to you. Um, but it's about bringing in, bringing it in with love. It's not about fighting things. It's, um, it's about bringing in love and actually showing those things a little bit of higher vibration mm -hmm. and helping them to actually, I call in the angels a lot too, to help me to do that work. I'm not the only one doing it. I'm just like, I'm just like me helping them find the space that they need to go to, to help themselves to not, uh, be in a darker space, to be able to get them back to balance again. Do you find that when you do find, um, something that doesn't want anything to do with the light and they can't be talked to or, don't want to be dealt with that when you call in the archangels and you call in Yahshua that, you know, you still don't have to worry because they're going to take them where they belong. You know? Yeah. There's only been, I've only had like one, 
one time where um it was a female that didn't go didn't go through all the way and i learned my i learned at that on that one um sometimes it's not good to try and force either so trying to um get them to go in to the light when whatever way shape or form is good for them uh, and that one took a few times but it but it happened um but other than that yeah it's definitely it, if if i'm not getting anywhere i'll ask you know for whoever's the best to come in and and because you know like one specific person um it and that person wouldn't have trusted an angel which is crazy but that person wouldn't have trusted an angel so i i brought in i asked for whoever and it was his wife so he trusted his wife wholeheartedly it's kind of like the first time i got my first mediumship messages i heard i heard my mother because i was in fear back then and it was right after my mom passed and I, and I heard her talking to me when I was out running and it was, it was very, very clear, very obvious. It was my mom. And I went be, before I would have been fr totally freaked out, but because it was my mother and I had asked her to come back and talk to me, of course. Uh, but because it was my mom, I was completely, I felt completely safe and I knew that it was okay. And, and that, that gave me the the courage to go, Oh, okay, this isn't anything bad. So that's kind of a, an, you know, like just like me, you know, where I don't think anybody else could have, if anybody else had come to me in spirit, I would have been like, oh my God, because I had so much fear. But after <laughs> it was mom, and I'm like, hey mom, what's up? Oh my God, and I'm crying. So, <laughs> and mm -hmm. that was an amazing, an amazing day when that happened. So, we, and we, and the cool thing is, is everybody has these gifts and abilities. They just don't realize it or they don't realize when somebody in spirit is coming to talk to them, they'll just get a glimpse of them or in their head or in their third eye, or just think about them really strongly all of a sudden. Like, like when I'd be out in the kitchen um, making pies, my mom was a big pie maker. And when I'm, oh, try not to cry. When I'm out in the kitchen, every time I can feel mom right there with me. And she's like, okay, do this or do that. Or, you know, or you're doing good or whatever. So if people would realize, um, or they're coming to them in, in their in their dreams you know and um and it's a very special thing so those are the yeah. kind of things that i like to help people open up to absolutely cool. um yeah. what are some of the techniques that you can say off the top of your head that you use when you're doing a house clearing i allow and whenever i'm going through a house i i always call in um those who walk in the white light only very very important um people can get messed up with number one a lot of ouija boards where they don't know what they're doing i'm not saying ouija boards are evil i don't personally work with them but um i feel like it is a tool and even like a, a pendulum or cards if you don't call in and ask for only those who walk in the white light you're calling in all kinds of things that are not of the light or are not of balance and so i end up doing a lot of a lot of entity removals from people because of those types of things and um i think people just don't realize especially they'll be like oh yeah yeah oh yeah i'll say ouija board and they'll be like oh, crap you got me <laughs> like, yeah. so, what if you have someone who kind of likes their ghosties hanging around what's your advice for them I would say, you know what, a lot of people don't, I tend to remove, I tend to either help them to the light or um, one way or another, or help transmute that energy. I tend to just go whole hog and go, okay, well, let's clear this house out. But there are a lot of um, benevolent beings. Um, I kind of feel personally that it's kind of doing them a disservice, unless if they really choose to stay, because it could be somebody who's not, doesn't have any ill intent. Um, and they might want to stay and if you want to allow them that's totally fine but you got to realize um anybody who's in spirit that is not sparkly as i would say if they haven't gone to the light yet they're actually going to drain your energy whether they want to or not whether they one, realize it or not what's that do you think even if it's a loved one they should no, they can. yes yes so actually actually people in spirit can actually embed themselves into our energy fields to also so if they haven't gone to the light, if they've gone to the light, they aren't going to do any of that, those types of things. But uh, sometimes it's a way of them kind of grabbing on to you and going, oh, I, I really like your light. And they kind of just grab onto you and they can actually become embedded into the person's energy field. And 
I've seen that quite a few times where um, if this person had a specific ailment in their lifetime or an anger or any of any feelings or physical problems, the, the person that they're latching onto or attaching into is going to actually feel their symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it, yeah. it's, it's just not healthy. It's a codependent relationship. Even if it was mm -hmm. your husband or your wife, it, um, they, they always come, they always stay connected with your heart. And you just, if they allow them to leave and go to the light, and then when they come to visit them in the future, then it's not unhealthy because they've been whole, they're healed and whole, and they have the wisdom that they, um, um, and the knowledge to help them and guide them. And sometimes, sometimes they can be your guide um, afterwards, like your mother is for you. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's not a healthy situation to ever have earthbound um, in your house or around you. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that. A lot of people, just, they go, oh, it's fine, they're nice. And it is fine that they're nice, but they are gonna, one way, it, they haven't been healed, just like Bonnie said, they haven't been healed, they haven't gone through their work that they need to go through when they cross. Um, and so they go through this healing process on the other side. And when they do this, they become, you know, they, they kind of get rid of all that junk and then, then they're in the light. Then when they come back and visit you, that's why I always tell people, I'm like, no, they'll come back to you. They'll come back to you in a better way. And they'll be able to help you in the correct way where, um, like if they, you know, they may have some negative feelings still or whatever, you know, they're not going to give you advice that they're not going to give you advice that's through filters from their lifetime yeah. here. They're going to so give you angelic really, advice. But this would happen to like maybe somebody that, um, wasn't expecting it like maybe like a heart attack or a car accident or something where it just happened like really quickly and they didn't really expect it and they're just like hanging around their loved ones because they don't know what they're supposed to be doing yeah, yeah. and then they, it can actually drag the person's energy down especially like if they were to have like so that's a good idea or not a good idea but a good explanation like they had a heart attack that person had a heart attack a lot of times people pick up um, people in bars and things like that in the lower vibration areas. And mm -hmm. so if you think about it, this, um, this entity or this, you know, person that hasn't gone to the light is, is like, Ooh, I like that girl. So she can go home and be like, why do I feel so funny? And she changes her whole demeanor. Um, you know, she's thinking about, do, she's getting promiscuous all of a sudden when she never was, or you know, there's all kinds of things that they can kind of they can kind of take on that person's feelings and emotions and thoughts and they kind of can almost control them a little bit. Um, and so and that's just not healthy, obviously. Right. Because like it there's be some healthy. that want to gamble or, or they just addictive behavior and then yeah. you end up, your whole life is turned around and you don't know why, why it turned mm -hmm. for the worse, you know? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Okay, but yeah, that's, 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 that's um, well, I guess like, um, what is your biggest challenge of a, of a healing, whether it was a demon you faced or, um, or, or somebody's, um, had a severe health issue that you assisted them with. It took a lot of sessions or like something that maybe you're most proud of, or that was a challenge in your, um, in your time of healing people. Um, there was, I mean, I, I've definitely gone up against a lot of nasty demonic beings. And um, when I go up against them, I can, I can feel it. I'll just feel this really heaviness on my heart. And I almost, and it gives me the feeling of like, I, I it almost like makes me just want to go back away from them or, you know, it gives me that feeling. And that's my natural gut instinct to do that. Um, but I've, I've been able to stand on my own two feet and that's what I'm proud of is being able to stand on my own two feet to go, no, I, you're not allowed here anymore. Like this isn't cool. You can't be with this person. There was, there was one specific person that it, it literally took me and I'll wrap them in light and do all this stuff. And it was like a, a serious, like serious fight actually to get this thing <laughs> to cross. Cause it was a really nasty one. And, but I did, but I was able to do it. And that person, that person is, I'll never forget it was at Choices and, and Pat looked at me when that person left and she just goes, that was not the same person that walked in here that 
walked in her earlier they're like she's like like she is just like and i was like and then afterwards i went holy crap what did i just do <laughs> so that's kind of scary um but you know sometimes i just you can't get in fear so if you get in fear you might as well just ha hang your head up because there's there's no way you're going to do this if you if you stand your fear you have to be able to be able to do some of the stuff you have to have done a lot of your shadow work you have to you can't have a bunch of stuff that if like if that demonic being wanted to make me see some of my worst fears that I hadn't worked through, that could have taken those things and turned them in my head and made me fear. But I got past that point, especially after working at that building I was talking about. Um, I had to face things and be in that building knowing what was going on there. And I saw some nasty stuff and it would come up to me and growl on my face. And like, it was just crazy without talking about it too much, but it was crazy. And so after that, I'm like, well, shoot, if I can do that, I can do any of this stuff. So look, come on, let's go. Um, yeah. One of the other things that um, was what some of the proudest things that I was going to say that um, I've been able to do is some of the people who, and I don't expect for me, for people to tell me, oh, like you healed me and you know, blah, blah, blah. And not that I'm healing them, but we're doing it together. Um, but one of, um, a good friend of mine, one of her mother was very, very ill and, um, in ICU and, um, I went in and we did a, we did a circle and, and I did a lot of energy work on her. Um, and she was, she was having a really bad time and she was not doing well. I, you know, I knew she was not doing well at all. And, um, I talked to my friend months later and I said, Hey, I never heard about how's she doing? And she said, she's completely like, she's doing way better. And I was like, wait a minute, that's a, that's a diagnosis that people don't get better from, isn't it? And she said, you're right. And I said, wow. And I'm like, what do you think happened? And she goes, you. And I said, well, no, it wasn't me. It was all of us. We all did it. And she believed so that she healed herself and she's working again. So it was just some of those stories that people tell me, especially with attachments, spiritual attachments, you can remove an attachment and people's, it completely changes their body. I've had people come back and tell me just literally removing an attachment. They had this extreme excruciating pain for years, chronic issues. And they're like, I don't have it anymore. It's gone. And I'm like, whoa. So sometimes I, it even surprises me, <laughs> you know, cool. it's kind of cool. Were you going to ask something else? Sorry. I didn't mean to stop you. Um, have you learned what was maybe one of the coolest things that you've learned, like when you've been healing people that has really assisted you, like a go-to, um, a go-to practice or a go-to like um, part of your healing modality? That'd be kind of cool to hear about. <laughs> one of the coolest things is watching. Um, my husband makes me watch Marvel movies all the time, <laughs> and it's like I. I, I would go and watch like Wonder Woman. I remember watching Wonder Woman and I um, can't remember the other one. Um, uh, I can't think of her name, but watching them and then getting the idea and, and going, hey, I could be like that. And so when I do my energy work, I'm actually doing just exactly what they do. So that's that's my superpower is that we're all super. We all have superpowers. And I took those things and I'm like, this is just energy. That's they're they're kind of giving us a heads up and going, hey, you can do this stuff. You you're a superhero too. So let's all be superheroes and it's fun. <laughs> um, so that's the, that's it, you know. And of course, work, working with the angels, which I know that the angels and my spirit guides and my spirit animals, um, which I tell you what, my spirit animals have helped me immensely. I'll never forget get going into a I was in a house last year um where it was just full of stuff and it was almost Halloween time. It was the beginning, what, first, second week of October, Bonnie? Yeah. And I walked in and I just, Bonnie was there with me and I just, I was, um, I was just hoping, I was sitting there going, mentally asking Bonnie going, please ask me to go clear this house. <laughs> please ask me to go clear this house. And she, and she looks at me and she goes, will you go clear the house? And I'm like, thank God. And so I went I, in and I went. I could feel them everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was just everywhere. I think, I think some new portals had just opened up. It was just, it was crazy in there. And I went upstairs and I'm like, all right, guys, you know, I felt like I was the superhero in the movie, just walking in going, all right. <laughs> and, um, but with energy, of course, and my animals all just went scattering and went, you know, and then my, I felt all these 
I felt some of the strongest energy. <laughs> Yeshua walked right into my energy field that day. Let me tell this and part. It was amazing. When she yeah. got done with that, we were sitting in the dark, cause, well, with candlelight, because we were getting ready to do our meditation circle. And she mm -hmm. came back down, and it was like somebody turned a light on. She was glowing so hot. She was like, we were like, oh, look at this. Look at the energy come off of her. It was amazing. <laughs> she just, yeah, cleared that place. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. And it wasn't just me. It wasn't just me. It was my, it was my team. It was our, you know, we have teams. We have teams that help us. And once we learn about them and, and um, learn how to work with them, that yeah, was just we were like, getting, we're getting crazy. ready to do the meditation. And I could just, I could just feel all the disturbances. And I was like, oh, this isn't going to work. House needs to be cleared. <laughs> <laughs> was, I know, and I was cool. the reason I was wanting to do it is because it wasn't because of me, but it was because I I couldn't have meditated with all that stuff going on in the house. Like I couldn't have got to that vibration. It would it what we needed to clear it to be able to do that. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely, it was pretty amazing. That was the oh, thank you. Yeah, I know. I blew I blew Cheryl back with the energy. I walked in and she just goes, "Holy crap!" She goes, "Stay <laughs> over like, here by me forever." She was like drinking up the energy. <laughs> That was cool. That was a cool uh, experience. Yeah. That was a really cool experience. And it doesn't always happen like that. I mean, you know, I think that you, was the very first walk time on. that that was the very first time that you had that that energy burst that comes from your heart, you know, that that God energy that came from it was like really amazing. I mean, I think you were being initiated that day. Because the hours I think I was overrun. It was really bad. I know. And I, I, I'll never forget the feeling that came through my body. And I, I, when I came up to the top of the stairs, that's where whatever the nastiest thing was in the house. And I walked up into the stairs and I just remember feeling that something was going to try and knock me backwards. And I went, nope, you're not going to try like to knock me back down the steps. I knew, I just knew it. Something was going to, and I went, nope. And I just took my energy and just pushed it, pushed it forward. But when it came through, it almost felt like, um, I'll never forget, Bonnie, you said like you couldn't like a human body isn't supposed to take that much energy. And it, and that was the most energy I'd ever felt come through my body. I was sitting there like high on energy for the whole night because I was like, Holy she didn't God. need to meditate after that. Well, we did. But. I needed to calm myself down, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy energy. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So there, that was that. That was last October. I haven't felt a lot of those energies quite yet, but who knows? It's we're coming up. You know what's today? The fifteenth. So mm -hmm. we're getting closer to that. That you know, magical. Yeah, date. It, was, it was around <laughs> this time last year. Around yep, time. it was right around this time. And last year, I know there was a lot of things. Uh, Mother Earth was opening up and you know spitting out, and that was part of it. Um, trying to clean herself out and. You know, I just know that there's going to be a lot more this year than it's going to be more amplified this year. That's another thing that you do, Kathy, um, tell people about how you do earth healing. So, yeah, um, yeah so it's a, really similar to what you guys all do, um, all three of you. And um, I'll just be a, lo a lot of times it just depends on how I'm guided to do it. A lot of times I'll do it with somebody else. Um but I'll just go into the earth, find these places that need to be, they'll guide me to where I need to go to release those energies or to clean up energies. Um, I'll go in and sometimes mess up the energy there or re help it release and then help send all those beings into the light. I call it the light into balance, whatever. Um, and it's not just in the earth. It's, it's all over through the earth. It could be, you know, sending, um, sending good energy to people all around the earth and, you know, especially with the things that are going on on earth right now with people, you know, like send good ends like that. I'll just just send beautiful energy. in for people to accept it if they don't want it, but, um, the trees, the plants, animals, just sending energy out to help heal because we need so much healing right now and so much so many people are so distraught right now oh, that yeah. um and having such a hard time so a lot of that we i think i think all of us most of us light workers just do that naturally 
especially with the, the, we call them plays, but we're really doing some heavy duty energy work. To play, we do, and every time we do a play, that's like, like, because Bonnie, myself, and David, and you, we all do plays together. We mm -hmm. call them play. Mm -hmm. Whenever we do one that's like we're not planning on doing, we just say, "Hey, anybody want to play right now?" I feel like it. Usually, something really amazing or really like outlandish happens, and we think, "Why didn't we record that?" <laughs> <laughs> I know, because they are always really amazing. So yeah. Kathleen, and they heal us in the same time. You know, we get the healing along with everything else. You want to tell so, everyone so. some of the other groups that you're involved with and some of the other things that you do? Yeah. So um, my, I have my own um, Facebook page, um, Kathleen Sherman. Actually, I just changed the name of it, but it's Healing with Medical Intuition, Kathleen Sherman. Um, and that's my page, my Facebook page. And I have a group. The group is for anybody to share things on um, as long as it's um, of the light and, you know, for a good purpose um, and to bring light into the earth. That's um, Healing with Medical Intuition with Kathleen Sherman. That's a group. And then, Bonnie, you're also on the other one, um, and that's the Hearts of Change Collective. Um, and that's Bonnie, me, and Jennifer Passavant. And we also do a similar thing where we'll, we'll bring on other light workers and showcase them to help get people's word out about what they do. Because, you know, I may not resonate with somebody else, so with somebody, but we might bring somebody on that that's gonna be the person that they need to go to. So we like to get people on here because there's so many people that need, need help opening themselves up because there's so many people on earth right now that are going through this awakening process. And they're just like me, all of a sudden I hear my mom talking to me that passed a week or two ago, you know, and I'm going, on, whoa, what the heck happened? Where, where'd that come from? So people are opening up like that. They're seeing things, they're sensing things all of a sudden. Oh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Yeah, you came back. You stopped for a second. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. It's a little, little, little freezing, but a little freezing, but we can hear your voice. Hmm. Kind of like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about Hearts of Change while she's trying to figure that out. Um, you know, we we just bring people on who um, want to go. share their gifts go. and they want to um, showcase what they do. And um, sometimes we do an impromptu energy work or or we just we just want to let them um, show everyone. Now she's completely gone. <laughs> what it is that they do. Um, so we, you know, it's, an, it's another it's another thing like um, what Robin does, like for shine your light. Just allow people to shine their light. Yeah. And so yeah, but we, so, we're probably time to go. I'm gonna bring her back in a little second, and because we're gonna be ending it. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So switch sides. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of what happens on the hearts with Jennifer. Have you adopted her gene? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we didn't do the little, the, I actually did it myself though. Yeah. Our little prayer it, beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. David first was doing it and then you did it. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Even uh, my right. phone was doing it. So I think it was just, it could have been my about this yeah. new circle that you're going to be doing and um it's if anybody wants to find it um there when the week that it's happening there'll be a um an event that's made for this and it'll be up in the announcements in the new earth ascending consciousness group and all you need to do is just go over to the event and the uh, zoom link and everything will be there for you and then after it's after we we do this, it will be recorded, and then we will be putting it up into the New Earth AC YouTube channel that we have. So if anybody wants to see any of these unity circles that we have or that we've done um, in the past, all you need to do is go up on the New Earth AC um, YouTube channel, and you can watch them over and over and over again. So they're up there for everybody to watch. So we thank you, Kathleen, for coming on today and letting us know what you're going to be doing. And you're going to be starting out with um, with the house clearing unity mm -hmm. circle. 
But then you have plans on uh, coming in and doing a few more different kinds as they as the time evolves. Yeah. And so we look forward to having you with us. And um, I can't wait to go to your Unity Circle because I I can't wait to hear about all these ghost stories you're going to (laughs) tell. Is that that next weekend? Is that next weekend you're doing that? It's it's on the 29th. It's on a Thursday Mm -hmm. night. Cool. Right before mm-hmm. Halloween. Ooh. Right before Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about my real life ghost stories and yeah. some of the stuff and explaining what it is that I found when I went into those houses and those properties uh, and how I helped clear those those energies from them. I've got quite a few, so I got lots of stories to tell. <laughs> and then I'm going to also help people um, to know how to do some of their own energy work and how to clear their own places and maybe some things not to do um, <laughs> that that people do that don't they don't realize that that's kind of messing up the energy in their place. And yeah. if people are going to be coming to it, um, I think what's something would be really cool because it's our only unity circle that's going to be going on for the Halloween. If you want to come in a costume, you can wear a costume. Because <laughs> Why <laughs> not? <laughs> I think I may have to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, like with all this happening in our world, you know, not a lot of people are even going to be able to do parties and things like that. So why not? We'll we'll have a little we'll have a little bubbly while we're there. Or something like that, that sounds amazing. <laughs> okay, I already know who I'm going to be. That's cool. All right. <laughs> you know what you're going to be, you said? Yeah, I'm going to be Wonder Woman. I was just going to say. That's cool. Yeah, seriously. Of a costume too. I might wear my son's costume. He's got this really cool costume. Has anybody ever heard of? I didn't ever hear of this, but he tells me all about it. It's called the the Plague Doctor. No. And he, this guy, he has like this, like really pointy. It looks like a bird yeah. nose, right? And he kind of, he went around during the time of the plague and he was like, he had this mask on so that he didn't get the plague. And then he has like these potions bottles and stuff like that. Maybe I'll steal his costume. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Those always creeped me out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> probably some memories from another lifetime. <laughs> I never heard of it before until he just all of a sudden wanted to make that costume. Hmm, interesting. Innovators. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, everybody, we're going to say goodbye for now. Goodbye. Thank you guys so much for bringing me on. I really oh, appreciate it. I can't wait. Yeah. That's good. Clear some houses. <laughs>